Hi everyone. Hi. Um, I'm not. I'm not here yet, but we couldn't afford a host. So, um, <laughs> yeah, basically, thank you guys for coming. Welcome to the one year anniversary of the capsule. Ooh. Yeah. Love that reaction. Come on now. Yo, live pods are so much better than ones by ourselves. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not technically here yet, so I'll talk a bit later. But first, basically, we've got a few different things going on. Um, I wanted to bring uh, these guys from the Ins and Outs podcast. If you haven't heard of them, get to know. Um, because Kane was super nice to me when I first, first, first started the podcast. F did like maybe three interviews or something, and he... Uh, invited me onto his podcast and like talked me up and like gave me loads of advice and has, still does to this day and told people to go and check out my podcast it was like it was barely a thing yet and he was telling people go check it out and you know helping me out and backing me um, so that was super nice and I mean th this is only one part of what I would hope to give back but I thought it would be only right to bring him and give you guys a little quick taster of their podcast they're just going to chat a little bit if you do like their podcast please do check it out um they'll tell you everywhere where to find it even if you don't even if you don't <laughs> check it out if you hate them go you and check come it and out slag us off we take comments yeah any engagement is good engagement <laughs> all press is um, good press <laughs> but yeah so i'll leave it to these guys and then you'll see us a little bit later but um yeah thank you so much guys and uh, thank, thank you. you guys yeah. well this is different I haven't done this in front of a room of faces that I don't really know, and some that I used to idolize. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but I'm Kane. Uh, I created the Ins and Outs podcast. Um, I've been a professional dancer since I was 18. I'm 32, so that's quite a long time. Um, I'm from Wales. Somehow I've managed to blag a decent career in this industry. Keyword being blag. Um, and I'm brave enough to talk about it. And not a lot of people in our industry are. That's why I started the podcast. I wanted to help young people or just any people, I guess, who are trying to break into the industry, who are afraid of asking questions. Um, I was never afraid to be the man to ask a question when everyone else was. I was always the one to bite the bullet for the team, and it hasn't always gone in my favor, so I thought, let's utilize this and try and help the younger generation. On my journey, I was really lucky that I got to meet this uh, talented man named Jake. Thank you um, much. Jake, I met him in a dance class probably five years ago yeah, five, six, and I was yeah. like yo he's quite good and he was like yeah I started dancing like two months ago I was like what <laughs> two months ago you're picking up like advanced combos and uh we just become talking we became friends and then one day he signed on to my training program I was like do you want a videographer do you want a producer for your podcast and I was like okay I didn't think he knew what he was signing up for because I'm proper lazy <laughs> um and he does everything I just talk um, and then he jumped on board and started with the man behind the desk and then was actually really fucking clever and I'd always be like yo he's smart and I figured out the thing that he has which you know I feel like I'm quite good at blagging dance and I'm good at dancing I'm good at selling but he has a real like uh, business brain he would hate to say it but I think he's a bit of a, a young entrepreneur entrepreneur <laughs> we'll go with that a entrepreneur <laughs> uh, and he runs like a business multiple businesses and he always really inspired me by his work ethic. Uh, so I just felt like I had to have him part of my team because I was like, I want to be surrounded by people better than me, people winners, people who are, understand worlds that I don't. There's no point having two me's, otherwise we just end up with double blagging. Um, so someone that actually researches what they're really doing. So this is Jake. So he's not a professional dancer. I'm blagging it too, just, just to clarify. <laughs> but just so you know who he is and you don't think who's that guy or who's this guy. Um, so yeah, this is different. Live audience. Uh, we've not really done this before. We've done mm. Q&As. We're not like a, a live one. But a big thanks to Luke for bringing us on. We're super grateful. Um, and shout out to him for taking the dive into this weird world where you put all this effort in for maybe 200 views. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he feels that joke. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but this is Jake. So we've got 30 minutes. Jake has got a topic that we're going to kind of discuss, I think. Mm, nice one. I think it wraps up into your uh, intro quite nicely. A question that I was thinking about quite recently in my own life is what uh, pivotal moments were there in my life that created monumental change to kind of pave the way for my life? And I was going to ask the same question to you uh, on both more of a, well, more of a dance level, but on a philosophical and what I mean by that is, was there a moment in your career where someone said something to you that 
gave you that edge to go into an audition or whatever, whatever, or um, you took a class that completely changed the way you think about dance, et cetera, et cetera. Or uh, something on a negative note, something that went poorly, which you think you could, which you learned from that, uh, created the next level higher for you. Yeah, I think there's loads. And like, it goes from being like a little kid to probably yesterday, there was things that someone might have said that would change my thought process, but like monumental ones, if we're gonna relate it to dance, cause we're in a room, I believe, full of dance. I hope, although it's at the wrong place. Um, I remember I used to compete at UDO comps from the age of 14. Um, and for, for lots of familiar faces, now I'm one of the head judges and it's been a huge part of my life. And I'll never forget being probably 15 or 16 years old and being at one of the events in Glasgow and it felt huge at the time. And it was probably like 200 people. And I remember being like, yo, this is massive. <laughs> and uh, a wonderful woman who you, I hope you know, named Lizzie Goff, a guy called Pete Francis, new name Pete Styles, because he got beer styles apparently. And then, uh, stop laughing, Ken. What are you laughing at? Pete Styles, that's his name, Roller Pete. And then uh, a guy called Patman, right? Roller Pete, those who know, know. Uh, a guy called Patman. And I remember them saying to me, you're really good, you know? And I was like, well, I'm from Wales. Like, we don't dance. Like, no one's ever really said you're really good. And her being like, I feel like you could really focus on, like, making dance a career. And always until then, it was like dance was a hobby. Like, boys didn't dance. Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't dance. It wasn't something in Wales that we did. We did rugby. And I always was like Billy Elliot of the rugby team. And I did all the sports that everyone thought was the right thing to do for a dude. Um... And I was like, what, you think I can make money doing this? And she was like, yeah, definitely. So I was like, okay, what do I have to do? And she said, keep coming to these events and like keep networking with people and keep training at home and doing what you can because like you're a kid and you live in Wales and there's nothing. I had one teacher for like my whole life until I was 18. And it was just like that reassurance that, okay, there's something I can do. There's like someone who has made it at the time, she was like doing all the Zoo Nation shows. In my eyes, she was Lizzie Goff. I looked at her as like this idol. And the fact that she believed in me, I was like, okay, I'm going to try and take this seriously. So I started like taking different styles of dance. I went to like a place called Rubicon and I did like contemporary dance. And I was like, yo, why is everyone rolling on the floor barefoot? Like, why haven't we got trainers on? Why is no one else trying to do a bum spin like I am to run DMC? Or like jumping over people's backs thinking you're cool. And uh, it just kind of opened my eyes to a whole world of like the unknown. And it was terrifying as a kid when nobody else danced. So I have a best friend called Kyle, who I somehow convinced to do it with me, told him it was a good idea. If you know my best friend, I know probably Ken does, but no one else would do it. And he was like, I ain't doing that. I was like, come on, bro, it's cool. And I convinced him into doing it with me. So I felt like I had a teammate or a wingman. And uh, we ended up joining dance college where like, you're gonna do ballet every morning. I was like, what, I'm doing this shit? This is rubbish. And then every time I'd go back to a competition, I'd speak to Lizzie or another guy called Glenn Ball, and they keep reassuring me that I'm on the, the, the right path, even though I kind of doubted mm. it, and I doubted them, and I doubted how I felt about the journey I was doing. I just had to know that I would never have that end goal that they said I could have and I wanted unless I stuck through that shit feeling and that feeling of doubt every day until it became normal until I started to go, oh, I'm actually not the crappest in the room anymore. I started to go from being able to just touch my knees to touch like my shin. I got a bit more flexible and new things started to happen. I can only touch my ankle now, but... <laughs> Stop that's laughing. on a good day. <laughs> yeah, that's when I'm warm. And then it just opened new doors and then I got better, started being invited to like auditions for jobs and then I booked my first job at 18. Nice, man. So in the space of like three years of never knowing it would be maybe even a career, to making it, doing my first job. That would be my probably biggest change to make me go from just a little Welsh kid who played football and rugby to that one the step into this yeah, place yeah, yeah. now. Do you have any? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is it's not dance related at all. Um, was I listened, I heard a quote from- Shock. Uh, shock horror. I love a quote for the record. I'll probably pull out at least six today. Um, was from a hip hop artist group called Collective Efforts. And I was probably listening to it about when I was about 15 years old. And it said, uh, that's the world that the world gave you, but who are you within the world? 
And it took me about 10 years to work this one out. Say it again. Oh, fuck no, I hate when you do this. <laughs> um, that's the world that the world gave you. Uh, that's the role that the world gave you, but who you were in the world. Uh, in the role, sorry. And it took me so long to work out what that meant. I'm not sure why that quote stuck in my mind for so long. Um, and it wasn't until I fully worked it out did my life kind of go into a bit of an exponential growth, whether that's physical, mental, mental health or whatever, like financial relationship where it's wise. And we always describe ourselves like I'm Kane the dancer or mm. I'm Jake the PT or Jake the gym owner or whatever. But we never actually realise who are we within that role? What values do we bring? What characteristics? What, um, what's the importance of you in that role? And it, the moment I realised what my core value system was and how to apply that core value system to every element of my life, did it every part of my life start to succeed? Mm. And I think it's very hard to be happy and content in most sectors of your life. We often have like the business, the friendship, the relationship, the financial, the mental health, the physical health. And it's incredibly hard to balance all of those. And what I found was that if I applied every single part of my value system to each role, no matter if I was Jake the videographer that day or Jake the PT that day or Jake the friend, applying the value system created a successful equation to each element of my life. And those values could be something that's like, you know, kind, hardworking, loyal. Are they your values? Yeah, my values. Mm -hmm. like, like, for me, like, when you, when you really find, like, the, the, the core, I say value, well, like, the core value of who you are, no matter what negative input you have, nothing deters you away from that. If you can strongly succeed in that, in that realm of value systems, nothing bounces you off. And you can create an exponential growth in, yeah, multiple... Mm. You so you take your what you believe your core values are and you apply them to every endeavor or relationship yeah. that you succeed that was a much quicker way of saying it no. <laughs> <laughs> i get it so like knowing you as a friend for like and a kind of a business partner for like just over a year like so the things that if i think of you i would always say like you're super reliable mm -hmm. your work ethic is like unmatched and your loyalty and dedication to the t to the the goal Mm -hmm. always exceeds everything else do you think that about you yeah and that, like i think that's a really interesting way of putting it is if i spoke to any of my clients any of my friends any of my family members etc i think they would all describe in the same way because i've learned to communicate from that value system over everything else mm. and that was a really pivotal moment for me because why well, fuck me it took 10 years to work out that quote but the moment i worked it out instead of doing this and slowly getting better i started to do this and every region of my life so what i guess values do you think make someone successful good question um i think i'm only picking your brain because you're the one that come up with this <laughs> uh i think honesty of who you are first so working out who you are and demonstrating that to every single person around you is like super important like Again, if, it doesn't matter if I'm speaking to a CEO of a company or if I'm speaking to you or speaking to a friend or whatever, I'm still going to be honest about who I am and never adapting that, that mold of myself. Mm. So I try to never change myself. I, you know, I downplay some parts of my, my characteristics and highlight other parts depending on who I'm talking to. But being your, your authentic self is, uh, I think, I hate important. That word. I, I hate it so much. But do you, know, yeah. do you see where I'm trying to go with it? Um, successful traits and I think it's been hard working of whatever task is in front of you no matter what if you're working a shit job you know if you're working at McDonald's still being the best worker there possible mm -hmm. or if you're working as a backing dancer for Jason Derulo mm -hmm. you know you're still bringing the same characteristics forward and those are the two main elements that I bring with me and it's like you I guess you always say to me like always put your best foot forwards always doesn't so matter like what no matter is. what endeavor it is or even if it's just i don't know going to teach at a random dance school where you're lucky enough to teach five-year-olds for the afternoon how to clap their hands like you do it <laughs> and to they the always clap ability. Ability. <laughs> or whether it's people who are aspiring professionals it's like you put in the same effort same effort wherever you go 100 mm. percent. that's interesting because i feel like as as humans like i guess we say that we do that but like do we really because if i actually think about it like Yo, I've been in some of the best rooms in the entire world that as a 15-year-old, I'd have been like, fuck, I'm in this room with these people. 
and I'm dancing for this artist and I'm getting paid what I thought was bank and real little did I know I'm probably being exposed a little bit. <laughs> we know. Uh, that's a whole massively, whole podcast. Uh, massively underpaid, but that's <laughs> another day. Um, and actually, I, it's an opportunity which once upon a time I would have died for, but I wasn't putting my best foot forward. Mm. Even though maybe I'd be like, yeah, I am. I'm the shit. I'm going for it. I look back because I'm 32 and I look at my 23-year-old arrogant self and I probably wasn't putting my best foot forward. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now I look back and I can see the consequences to that and how that's affected maybe my journey or deterred it off. And although I think I've had a great life and I wouldn't change it, it could have been monumental is the word you used earlier, right? Mon monumental changes. Like yeah. it could have been monumental, but I think my bad characteristics sometimes showed through. Okay, so let's, let's lean into that. I obviously asked you to highlight a positive experience that created monumental change is there a negative experience that created monumental Most change? Most definitely. Do you know what I mean? Something where you really fucked up. Yeah, you know, all the time, go, every day. Sort the shit out. I'm not making the bed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I start that's my day. That's just happy though, isn't it? Yeah. Not just that, but yeah, lots of those. Um, negative ones would be like, bringing my outside or my home life into my work life. Mm. And I feel like it's really easy as dancers or artists or anything, not just dancers. But I really feel like in the dance world, we're always told like the show must go on. Like it's kind of like if you've been to dance college, you're conditioned that from the day dot you walk through the door. They tell you the show must go on no matter what. I remember my teacher being like to a girl, like we're doing a show and like a bra come off and like a boob fell out and she's like, stay on stage. Don't fix it, keep going. And I was like, yo, this is a wild little life we're doing. <laughs> At like 17, I'm like, she's just gonna dance with a boob out. Like, that's what she expects her to do. This is crazy. Um, and in my life, I feel like there's been lots of highs, but at a really young age, well, really young, 24, I think, I felt like I took the biggest blow that I've ever taken. Like, for those who don't know, I lost my brother to suicide. Um, and I was living in LA at the time and I was going on set for a, a advert for a vodka commercial and it was about 6 a.m. My mum rung me and told me and I cried. I bawled my eyes out. I stayed on the bus. I was, uh, had my half hour of like meltdown where my friend Matt Day stayed with me, held my hand. He was like, it's all going to be okay. What do you want to do? And I was like, the show must go on. Like, we're going to stay on set. I'm going to finish this job. And I did the whole job. I just said to the director, like, they were like, you can go home. Like, it's not a problem. We don't expect you to stay. And I was like, I'm, I want to finish this because if I don't go, if I leave, what happens to the girl who's my partner who's rehearsed for a week? Mm. What happens to the vision? What happens to everyone else which is put in the graft? So I stayed and I finished my job or my duty as I felt. The director was amazing. She slipped me a seven, like $700 in an envelope, which I didn't know at the time. And she's like, this won't change anything, but I hope it helps. Mm, you good. with your next steps didn't even look at it finish my set while they all like did that extra shit that you do in a job where you, you know when they hire you to dance and then next thing you know you're carrying like a marshmallow or something uh, so they all got to stay and do that and I got out of there I would have took the sacrifice of staying for the marshmallow obviously but I left um, and then I come back home I moved back to the UK I never felt the need to go back to LA and I carried that bitterness with me of like the show must go on into every endeavor that like maybe come and I never it took me so long to realize that I was always the vacuum in the room because I was living with this like kind of not hate but like this resentment towards this dance industry we're in or this world and I'd go into every rehearsal and if something wasn't perfect I would let it eat up at my environment I was in because I was like wait I've sacrificed the biggest feeling I've ever experienced for this world and this industry we're in but you can't even treat me right. You can't even get me my PDs. You can't even make sure I've got shoes that fit me and I've got to wear two sizes too big for two hour show. Like all these little things which were unfixable or they keep you later than you needed to be and you have to cancel evening plans because someone didn't have their shit together so you've got to stay late. I was like, so I sacrifice all my, mm. gonna go, hold it together. Gonna sacrifice all my emotions and all my feelings and all the things that I go to make the show must go on but no one else can get their shit together. And that ate at me for probably like four years and I was the vacuum in the room. I always sucked the energy out of the room. And now when I look back, I'm like, yo, I should have just left the room. 
Do you know what I so mean? So like that's my negative, is that I never... So, so what what changed that pathway? You said about, you know, for four years, after that four-year spell, was there another instance that made you go, actually, maybe I'm the common denominator of my behavior, yeah. and I, I'm the negative person in the room. Yeah, teaching people who feel like they have real problems. Like, I teach at multiple dance colleges, or have for the past however many years, and they're, like, they're 18 in it, like they're kids. They come in, they be like, oh my God, I got no hot water. And they're like making a big drama. I can't dance today. I had a cold shower. And you're like, bitch. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're like, I've pulled a hamstring. I'm like, no, you stretched. Like, these aren't real life problems. And then I see 400 students a week, like thinking that these are real life dramas. And I'm like, yo, this so, world's mad. So we- like, this is crazy. The world that we're in. Like when we actually look at life as a whole, dance and People hate it, but like, it's such a small aspect. It means nothing. Well, I'm a human way before I'm a dancer. And like, I've said this to you, but like, I jumped out of a plane last year. And Intentionally. I remember, <laughs> inten- yeah, That's that intentionally. Long. And I remember falling, and I remember seeing a bus, and sorry, Luke, if this gets you flagged, I remember seeing a, a COVID vaccination center, and we're all gonna have different opinions on COVID, that's fine, and I'm sorry if I upset anyone, but I remember flying down like this, ah, screaming, my eyes feeling like this, looking like one of those dogs with all the skin, and I remember looking and seeing this red bus go around the corner in a vaccination center, and I remember how small the vaccination center looked. I was like, yo, this is tiny, it's like two buses. And then I was like, yo, the impact that this like, thing has had on the world, and that's gonna solve it, that tiny little thing. And it just made me realize, like. There's so much more to life than dance or like the things that we count as problems. Like, are they really problems? Obviously like COVID would have been a problem for people, but it, I don't know. It was like this huge thing, which has been like sold to us through the masses and the media and like it's caused all these deaths, which yeah, it has. But I remember seeing it and being like, yo, like actually life's tiny. Like let's just fucking enjoy ourselves. Let's just put ourselves in spaces we want to be. So instead of being the vacuum in the room, I've just learned to only go in the room that I want to be in, as opposed to just going in any room and being a negative Nelly. So if I just don't like something, I no longer go in the room. So now I'm always in positive places because I've set my boundaries and I've set my environment because mm, I'm set the, a boundaries, good word. Because I'm the human, not the dancer, not the show must go on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel it. So turning a... Let's go. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I think it's a really interesting way of like turning a negative and spinning it into a positive and a, a quick story in my own life. Again, it's not actually dance related, but um, when I was around 20, 2021, came out of school, no GCSEs, fucked up, uh, couldn't get a job anywhere, applied for loads of shit jobs. And I remember feeling super frustrated knowing that I was capable of delivering a better service to the world and not actually being given opportunity to present that. And I said to myself at 21, I'm never going to work for someone else ever again because the only way I can just me be part of a system is to be above the system Mm. because the system didn't allow for someone uneducated to work in positions that I knew I was capable of. And it sounds kind of arrogant, but it's it's not I'm saying that I've I've got a lot to offer, but I knew that I could offer more than what I could get. And so I used that negative of, feeling super angry of the, the world to create a, a entrepreneurial lifestyle. Mm. So it's turning that negative and spinning that shit. Don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, yeah, I feel like that's... That's a wrap. That's a wrap for us. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening. Uh, <laughs> sorry for my sob story. It's not for me to feel some sort of like, oh, bless him, but it's to hopefully open our eyes to, you know, life's more than just this. Just go and have fun. It ain't lasting forever. And big love to Luke. Do you want to do the bar plugs? Uh, yeah, follow us on Instagram at the Insnouts Podcast. We're on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Anyway, you can find that. We're normally way more fun than this, by the way. Yeah, I <laughs> like, I, I'm feeling the pressure today for sure. We're normally taking the piss a lot more. I like, yeah, I like the serious, serious talks. It was nice. Thanks, guys. I feel like you opened up. <laughs> Thank you so like much, dudes. Um, yeah, massive thank you to you guys. Um, yeah, bro, I super appreciate all the help you gave me. And like, I know for me, it's, I think when someone has just started something, 
I always fall into the thing of like, all right, let me see how dedicated they are before I give them any help. You know, like <laughs> I kind of wait to tr- to see that the person is like putting in work before I kind of give too much energy. I was like three podcasts in, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And Kane was like really helping me. And I think that helped me to actually keep going, if that makes sense. If he had waited and been like, well, let's wait till he gets to 50 episodes before I help him. I might not have got to 50 episodes, you know what I mean? So I, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you and it meant a lot, the help that you gave me. My pleasure, thank you. Um, so thank you so much guys for being Boom. here. Um, you can take your seats in the audience. Um, we have a, another couple of special guests before the dream team show up. Um, <laughs> so can we, can we get um, Mr. Dylan to the stage, please? If that's all right. Mr. Dylan. Which Dylan? I don't know. No, the one that we like. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah, do you wanna? Do you wanna? Just give us a minute to connect on. So, if you don't know this young man here, he's a fantastic beat maker. Um, if you producer, producer. Sorry, that was very offensive. What I just said. Um, <laughs> If you don't know him, you may be in the minority of people in the world because he has tracks that go dummy viral. And um, people that are like playing these battles uh, all over the world play his tracks. Happened to release a new album about an hour ago. So he very kindly said he was gonna maybe tell us a little bit about the album, what's on the album, maybe a little bit about what you're up to at the moment if you, if you feel like it, and preview us a few tracks. Thank you, bro. Hi, guys. I'm Dylan, a.k.a. Kiddo, a.k.a. Creator. Um, so, yeah, this is my 14th album. Um, so I've made 13 um, projects, so this is my 14th. I've made this in my dining room, so every album I've made has literally been in my house. Um, I've had no expensive equipment, so it's literally been my headphones, my hard drive, and my mouse. So um, with this album, I called it Grease. Grease, as in like in the UK thing, Grease. Um, and it just represents like the energy that I was feeling. Like I wanted to kind of make it a statement, like this is who I am and this is what I represent, you know? Like I wanted to make all these sounds for people to feel this energy, like, yeah, like man could do anything, you know? So yeah, yeah man, I just, <laughs> but yeah, like I'll play a few. Um, I'll play one that I made with, a producer from Ukraine called um, JK. I think everyone's heard of JK. Um, he makes a lot of battle beats and instrumentals that people love to dance to. And we made a remix to Beam, so hopefully it plays and yeah. I don't know. Everything you see is what you know, like when the sun rise and when the sun go. Put down the pride and think with your doom. Many men pass, got them wisdom low. And if you never know, now like you know. I'm talking to this host, them work on John Doe. Me, I pick it, try to get life for things so grow. Just know me, not just me, the pandy. I'm just a youth from the West Indies. Pushing on me, kind of what this left in me. They think me, I serve the rest of me. Yes, indeed, yes, yes, indeed. I'm just a youth from the West Indies. play one more and yeah you can find this on soundcloud and if you want to buy it um, it's on bandcamp so if you want to support your kids that'd be sick um i'll play this one it's not necessarily hip-hop but i called um, this one dislocate 
Um, it's so funny because I actually dislocated my shoulder, but that's not the reason why I called it that. <laughs> but yeah, this one's like a Afro-inspired kind of vibe. So yeah, enjoy. <laughs> I wish the quality was better, but anyways. <laughs> to do it, man. Mad love. Um, where's Sophia? Can you can you come can you come off it? <laughs> have a seat, mate. Oh yeah, you don't have to have a seat, but okay, she doesn't want to have a seat. Um, I knew if I told her I was going to do this, she'd be like, no, please don't. Um. So, for people that don't know Sophia, she's been helping me with the capsule for three months or so, something like that. A lot, I mean, the, the calendar, if you don't, haven't seen it, we have a calendar with all the kind of events updated. It's literally all her. A lot of the winner's posts when I've been at work or busy or forgot, <laughs> she does it. She's been like having my back big time on the capsule stuff and working... Um, working on her filming stuff. I really hate like calling myself like a mental person, but I've been trying to help her as much as I can with um, like filming and photography kind of tips and, and teaching a little bit like that to, to kind of give back, but she's killing it. She has her own channel, all.so.visual, so definitely check that out. Um, yeah, you can, you can give anything a round of applause, go for it. Um, yeah, but honestly, like she, I mean, she's just going into her third year at uni, so massive career ahead of her. Um, yeah, I just wanted to shout her out because she's doing amazing work with the capsule and she's like part of why we even made it to one year. Um, there's another couple of kids who are not here. Uh, if you don't know them, they're collectively, they're called Deli, um, John and Elijah. They are a couple of content creators. They've been on the capsule before. So if you don't know them, that means you're not a regular listener. Um, and yeah, they, they're working really hard with their content stuff. I also wanted to really kind of support them and big them up. Like I'm, I'm gonna talk more after about the capsule in general, but I'm really like a supporter of people pushing themselves in more than just like headbutting the brick wall that is being a dancer sometimes and it's like if you have other ways to support the scene to do things to express yourself i think it's super important and i love to help people do that but also if people are already doing that i want to support them and, and push them um so in that vein is that a saying um i yes thank you um 
I got <laughs> I got Sophia, babe. I got Sophia and Deli to link up, and they created a what is effectively like a short film together. It's the first time. Correct me if I'm wrong. That Sophia's ever created something that long, and she basically directed it, pretty much produced it as well. Um, Delay are hosting it together. Uh, I think it's the first time they've hosted something like that and worked on a kind of bigger production. Um, I haven't seen this full thing all the way through. I've just seen bits of it for me to give the odd note here or there. But basically, I kind of refused to get involved, <laughs> and I, I said like do everything by yourself. Like, Sophia said, can you come and help film? And I was like, no, figure it out yourself. <laughs> so that she can... So there's a, there's a method to it. But so that she can... I'm not just being mean for the sake of it. But I wanted her to, to deal with all the real-world challenges that come from creating a production by yourself and not having someone who's done this 20 times before to say, oh, what now? Oh, this ran out of batteries. Or this isn't working. What do I do now? It's like, figure it out. And I, for me, the best way to do that is on the job and with stakes that I'm managing. I'm the stakes, <laughs> you know what I mean? So no one's gonna get mad at her, no one's gonna do anything. It's me that is controlling that. So I was like, you figure it out, you do everything. So what you're about to see is completely done by them. I think it's brilliant from what I've seen and I'm super excited to watch the full thing. Woo, woo! What are you saying, guys? My name's Elijah. And my name's Dijon. And we represent d -Line. That's right. And we do vlogs, concept challenges, and we get a lot of coverage around the dance scene. Today, we have put together an amazing cast of creatives to see their views on the UK dance scene. And this cast will be taking part in a social experiment inspired by Jubilee. Mm -hmm where they'll be speaking on subjects regarding the dance community. That's right, bro. So we are going to say a bunch of statements and then each of the cast members are going to choose whether they agree or disagree. If they want to go to the agree side, they go where the green marker is. If they disagree, they go where the red marker is. Pretty self-explanatory. You lot will see for yourselves. Shall we get into the video? Yes, sir. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to the capsule <laughs> and to d -Li. Yeah, man. I hope you lots enjoy the screening. We out. Yeah. Right. Oh, with the camera's rolling? Oh, uh, recording. There is a lack of unity in our dancing. Um, I feel like. Personally, I categorise the scene in a specific way. I feel like the commercial side is its own entity. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have, we as an underground scene are, are cohesive to a certain extent. And I feel like the, the new generation, especially, I feel like we're, we're very supportive of each other. But I do feel like there is sometimes age divides, mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. The reason why I sway towards the yes is because I do think there's still some ununification of um, gender in the scene. But that's like a bit more specific. The commercial and uh, kind of underground scene is definitely separated. Underground events are mostly underground people, but there's never like, from my experience, a mix of the two, having commercial and underground in one event. But then at the same time in the underground scene, People are a lot connected, I think, in the younger generation and obviously older generation, but I still think there's a divide between those ages. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Can we please reset? Right, statement number two. The younger slash upcoming generation care more about going viral on social media as opposed to creating quality work. For Three, two, one, right. Right, hands. Okay. I think there's a difference between dancers and influencers. Mm -hmm. And I think the dancers are working hard and they're doing, they're representing very, very well. Mm -hmm. The influencers, right, on the other hand, they like TikTok is a massive, and I know this is going to come up from somebody. Um, in this specific bracket of a question, TikTok is a massive influence currently of like low quality, low quantity videos going viral. No, there is a very, very obvious line between influencers and dancers. And I completely disagree with this question because I think the younger generation now are bad. 
and that's it. So I'm in the middle again, guys. I'm in the middle on the black line. Uh, because again, it goes with individuality. There are those who I agree with Hannah are putting it out there and they're getting put out there because of the quality of what they're doing. And they're, they're making conscious decision about what content they put out to show their quality in order for their social media to be their CV, their website, and to show that they are not them type of people that is doing fraff, you understand? But then on the flip side, there are those who are degrading mm -hmm. the, 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 the beauty of what is happening from the younger generation. So they're, they're slightly making it look like they're lazy, they're not doing things. It's like a quick look on microwave situation instead of, yeah. instead of cooking, you know, using, you know, the, pot. using a pot and burning the, 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 the bottom bit, you know them ones. <laughs> so that's why I'm here because there are those who are Definitely when I see it, I feel as a mature, I'm not gonna say elder, mature person in the scene that in the sense of my age, yeah, because I'm still quite young uh, at heart, um, in a sense of what they're delivering, I feel very comfortable that I can sit back and go, cool. They're gonna take the reins and push the UK dance scene, but at the same time, you do get the Babylon that you're looking and going, oh my days, listen, if I get another email saying that I want some kind of TikTok thing going on, that's gonna upset me because then that's where the influence of influencer situation comes into play. You get me? Mm. Yeah. Don't know. Thank you. Is everybody ready? A strong social media presence is necessary to build a career. Another another social media question. I only, I only stand in the middle because I haven't really been around long to know even how to really build a career in dance, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what I've just, what I've seen is people on social media with loads of followers and then they get asked to do things because their page has a lot of attraction basically. But obviously because I haven't really been around for long, I don't really know the different ways to build a career in dance. For, for me, if me build, helping my career, shall I say, is putting myself out there where other people can see me that aren't here. Like I could be at an event here, do a mad round, but someone in Spain or something won't see that because they're not here. So when I've posted it now, they can see it and then they can show their people and they might have someone that's like, yeah, I like that guy. Let me bring here, let me, let me get him to teach here. And then they message me and it goes out there. So then again, I feel like having a good presence on social media is a good thing. But then again, like I said, I haven't really been around for long to really know the other ways to get me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, Kane, I haven't really been long that much to know. But obviously, it depends what each individual perceives as building a career and what a career means to them. That could mean making loads of money to someone. That could just mean making work for someone. Mm -hmm. But I don't think having a social media presence is needed. I just think it can elevate the speed at which it happens, but it's not entirely necessary. I mean, back in the day, I'm assuming there was no phones and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It was just word of mouth. I see that guy, and I was like, oh, you know about that guy? Straight Come place. to that city, mm -hmm. get that, talk to him, da 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 and it happens like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm done. Nice. We can sprint over here <laughs> because of the generation that we're from. Like, I have a good eight to 10 years in real life experience before it was a possible expectation for me to have a social media presence. So that is a blessing of like my timeline. I think it's important to have somewhere on the internet where someone can find you, but does that need to be a social media platform? Not so much. I think Matthew makes a really good point about what a successful career is to you, but even more so than that, like, what are you trying to achieve? Like, what is it that you want to do? Because if it's theatre, they're not really checking for social media like that. If it is brand sponsorship, then of course the metrics of social media matter. Also, job, career, vocation, different. Mm -hmm. And if it is more passion-led, then really fine. That's probably worth saying that's not that specific to the question, actually. It's so valid to be a dancer and artist and it not be your job. Mm -hmm. Like if you make your peas elsewhere, 
it really does not invalidate you as an artist at all. I would almost say that it can boost you because you don't have that worry about your quality of life and making your ends meet. I know full-time dancers that are broke, but they get off on saying that they're full-time dancers and I'm like, well. <laughs> I've gone off the point, but it is, it is an important thing to say. But I think the internet is necessary. I don't think social media is necessary. Nice. The older generation are stuck in their ways. <laughs> to the right side if you disagree, to the left side if you agree. I'm in the middle because I feel there are a lot of great people in those eras what have an example of how we can conduct ourselves but there is that space of um i'm gonna i'm going to say i'm gonna do this and then it becomes a myth in the sense of like i want to make spaces that create more for a connection from the older or younger generations or commercial to underground but because of the Maybe sometimes people's uh, position, they don't want to share too much information and shed enough light or bring in certain people because it may be more difficult than if I go and get someone who looks like the briefs that we get from. And this is me now speaking from like a commercial point view to freestyle because it was mentioned before that if there's a brief for freestylers and you want that specific energy but then I will go and look for uh, the image I'm looking for or the amount of followers I'm looking for so it, it kind of leaves a yeah I, I feel like that area is still very grey so I'm in the middle but yeah that is me. Cool well, yeah thank you Barry. The reason I disagree is because it is a bit of a broad question. It is a bit of a broad question. But if I'm just gonna go down to, on the dance perspective, and speaking for myself, I will teach my classes. And this is something I stick by. I say to all my students, say for example, we're doing a partable ray. This is how the step looks. If you do not get the step down, but you're still moving, you've made a mistake. Your mistake is not wrong. Your mistake is an automatic natural freestyle. You didn't stop dancing, you carried on trying to figure something out. Now while you're trying to figure something out, I've now looked at the mistake that you've made and I've looked at it and gone, I like the step. I am not afraid to tell a student, whether you're beginner, intermediate or advanced, that movement that you're doing there or the way you're grooving your body, you're actually influencing me to enhance myself. So I will look at that and go, this is you growing in yourself, but you're actually making me want to try something else out. I've gone to classes where I've learned from my students. I've learned from Kashmir. Kashmir taught me a step that I didn't understand. I caught the step, the Brexit step, because I didn't know what was going on. I got confused. And then I figured it out. I was like, okay, we left the EU, I get it. But at the same time, I picked up the step, bruv. And I was like, I learned that from Kashmir. His style of house is different to mine. But I'm just talking on the dance aspects. Like I said, it's quite a broad question, mm -hmm. but I feel like I learn from literally anyone, anywhere. Easy. And I'm not afraid to say that. So I disagree. My class is Wednesdays at 7 p.m. here at the Hub. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. I think it depends, well, I don't know if it's controversial, but the difference between like an older generation's discipline compared to like being stubborn or not wanting to change. Um, and accepting the difference between generations and how someone does something. Because I think there's a lot of older generations that have a, 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 a great and mature and respectful integrity in their style or what they train in that necessarily doesn't necessarily need to change in order for the younger generation to understand or get involved. Um, but then I also think there are, and again, it's a broad question, I think there are some people who may come across as though they don't want to accept the evolution of what the new generations are bringing. And I think there's a difference between ignorance and like yeah. having integrity, if that makes sense. Um, so I think it's maybe looking at that, that difference and seeing what can be done or what can be helped. Um, yeah. All right, can everyone reset please? 
Nowadays, foundations are not valued and utilized enough. The reason why I'm here in the middle is because, especially being someone like coming up, it's hard to go and learn hip hop foundations because there's no one really teaching it. There's the only person I no 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 and it's like, cool, we're gonna now, this, this is the bounce, this is the rock, this is the groove, okay. This move, this is the running man. Cool, this is five variations of the running man. Now this move, this is this move, this is five variations of this move. There, I feel like there's not many places around that really does that. So it's quite hard to actually like learn all of the foundation. Like I know there's foundation classes in that, of course, but I mean like in that sense, when I mean actual like moves and learning how to do them, or how to use them within what maybe I would do. You get me? I feel like it's a bit hard to try and find that around. And yeah, not to offend anyone. I think now, <clears throat> like we didn't know if a class was for us unless we went into the room and did it because we didn't have little snippets to look at. So it was a trial and error situation. Because when you said that, like I thought of David Cottle's class, which I know you probably wouldn't find yourself dead in, but his warm-ups before he teaches any choreography is very, very, very that that you just said. And it's also music theory, so you may go in for something and come out with more than you bargained for, but now we expect to like be sure we're going to the right training spaces before we go into the training spaces. Um, I think the foundations are valued among us, but I don't know if they're utilised enough um, yeah, I'm just going to be repeating what I say on the capsule about choreography being a whole jambalaya of mm. foundations that we know the choreographer doesn't have, but I'll just state it as fact and then cease speaking. If you, let's say, did a battle with somebody, let's say you did a battle that was judged purely on foundation, do you feel like you could throw out four, five, six rounds of just foundation? Like, mm. stuff like that. And if you're somebody who is trying to like thriving that I feel like it's important to have that ability and then to be able to branch off and explore your movement quality, explore your textures, explore different things like that. So I feel like as dancers, we need to be honest with ourselves and each other in like, when, when, you, when somebody asks for feedback, don't be afraid to say, all right, cool, this, this, this needs fixing, like, get me, but yeah. <laughs> Battle judges tend to favour popular dancers. <laughs> I was over on the agree side and I came back on to the black line because I just heard Kermick say something which made sense. I also judge, but I judge fairly. I've judged competitions where my students have been in a competition battling and I've voted for the other person. Regardless of me teaching, <laughs> regardless of me been teaching you for two, three, four years, however long, if this person won that battle, they won it. Mm. I've had my students come back to me pissed. Can we say that? Oh, yeah. Pissed off <laughs> that they didn't win. Why didn't I win? Go watch the battle and see what he or she did against you in that battle. Go and see what they did. Now, it does also piss me off, another thing that um, you touched on, where people will go to a battle, see who's judging, and then instantly feel disheartened because they're like flipping out. These people are battling, and those judges are there, I'll say it straight as it is, the twins are battling, and you've got two French judges and one Belgium judge. And you're like, oh, come on, what's going on? And then you also have the host who's actually hyping the dancers from that country more than the other country. You know? <laughs> it happens. And then the DJ would then throw on a track that the French or whoever know, all of this goes into that as well. So, like I said, I just feel like if you're going to, if you're going to judge, judge from your expertise, not because, oh, I know this person. I know, if it was my son, I'd be like, son, they won, you lost. That's it. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're grounded, then, isn't it? That's it. All right. Then you're one round south part. Everyone has made a very, very valid point. However, not saying I'm a professional because I have only just started, right? 
I just think people don't know how to battle anymore. Like, people will be like, oh, but I beat them because cause I hit this musicality bit. Okay, cool. They've got musicality and they're doing bare beat kills. So I've got to do that and I've got to have my foundation. Well, I mean, obviously always have your foundations, but wash your level up. They're, they're doing floor work, cool. I can do floor work and I can do all these beat kills and my foundation's on point and I'm gonna throw a little something else on the top. And I feel like people have a hard time to admit that they actually got beat because they're not battling smart. Everyone comes out and they're showcasing and they're, they're, they're like, either you're looking at the floor and you're throwing around here, but are you battling? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time I've been at battles and people have lost and these are the people that you think should have won, yeah. but I see why you've not taken it. Yeah. And I understand the decision that was made. So I understand everything that's being said because I do feel like there are some biases, like uh, judges judge based on what their favorite thing is, whether it's new school, whether it's old school, whether it's like, like, do you know what I mean? But I do feel like we're living in a generation where people are forgetting what battling is. Because if I'm here and I'm, I'm battling you and I'm saying like, look at me while I'm battling you, and you go off and you're crying and you're like, oh, why were they so mean to me? Well, like, you're battling. Yeah, that's, that's the culture. That's where you're at. So you need to learn what you're doing. You need to understand there's a technique behind battling. It's not just, I'm gonna throw around and cross my fingers and hope for the best. Yeah. You need to understand who you're battling and what you're doing. and and actually be aware of yourself while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that we're now currently lacking. We don't have battlers, we have freestylers. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, when, when I was younger, obviously it, there was level things in it, but it's like, let's say when I first kind of started, I would have battled someone maybe that's quite up there at the moment. And it's like, they haven't really done anything, you get me? or I've seen it, or I've seen other people, and it's like, the person will win, but it's clearly the person won just because it's like, yeah, they're there. And even times when I've battled sometimes, I've battled someone, and the people judging, I know them, but there's times I've battled, and I know I didn't win that round, but then they've all voted for me, I've gone like, mm. I, I kind of know you guys have just done that, you know what I mean? And then the DJs as well, I feel like, this is a big thing as well, I feel like DJs will, it's happened to me loads of times and I've kind of clocked onto it now. It's like, I'm out dance and the DJ will play a track for me, but it's like, I know you're playing this track because you want to see me dance to this song because there's been times where I've had the same track at the same events in the same point in the battle. It might be a final, I've had the same track in every final or, or even prelim, I've had the same track. But yeah, that's, that's something I've experienced as well. I feel like that's happened to me a lot, but yes. So that is a wrap. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you all for coming down. Yeah, yeah man. Make sure you follow the capsule. Make sure you follow the Eli. Yeah. yeah, enjoy the rest of the screening. All of that stuff, you get me? Haha, <laughs> love to everybody. Hey, love everybody. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Eli. Eli. It's a mixture of our names. John, Eli, Eli. There you go. <laughs> Welcome to the capsule! Joey. <laughs> You're dying. <laughs> Jenny had a drink. Yeah, how you doing? Hello. Hello. Sit down. Oh shit, come on. Thanks. You put it in there? Happy Capsule Anniversary! Yeah. Worst! The worst. We're now hiring a producer. That's a terrible snack choice. What do you mean? You have orange tea. Oh. Yeah, it's it an ASMR good? slash. Does it taste good? Not worth it. Not worth it. Just give us a second. I had, I had like flash forwards of you saying that you weren't going to like it. 
and I was in Sainsbury's, like standing in the aisle, like me. Yeah, it was specifically you. I don't know why. I was like, it was either gonna get popcorn it's not a or healthy that. Snack. Would you have liked popcorn? No, I'm, I'm actually fine. I just, just looking at them, they're basically like. Flaky you haven't hot. even tried it. I did oh, okay, try all right, it. All right, all right. I need to get angry. But they're Jesus like, Christ. Hmm? right? They're just gonna get in our teeth and ruin, ruin the aesthetics. <sighs> well. I'm sorry. I haven't right? even shaved my legs, so this is a nonsense before we even Two year start. anniversary, we'll have popcorn, all right? <laughs> okay, now, are you sorted? Oh, you got popcorn. Hey. Hey. Jen, are you sorted? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. Bye bye, Jenny. Jenny is a lightweight, for those that don't know. Ah. No one can oh. hear this. Sound. Bye bye, Jenny. Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Smooth start as usual. <laughs> um, all right. So I'll just say a couple of things and then we'll, we'll get started. I don't, I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> hello. So uh, thank you guys all for being here. Um, especially like people in the room. Um, and I know we have some audience online not a huge one but it's growing and i'm happy about that but i think what there's a comedian that i watch and some other people watch that like um he always says that you know the people that like get up out of the house and come and see you and like make the effort to get down it's like that shows your real kind of like people who really care i guess um <laughs> thanks jim <laughs> just undercutting all the seriousness moments <laughs> um but yeah, so anyway, all that to say, thank you guys for actually like being here. It means a lot that you've kind of made the effort to come out and, and celebrate with us. Um, little, not a backstory, but just something I, I did want to say at this point is like, so I started the capsule a year ago, September 7th, I want to say. Um, and... Yeah, basically, uh, I had, well, me and Jen, I mean, has helped me through all of this, but there was a East London idea, uh, East London Dance Ideas Fund. And it was like different projects you can get funded, blah, blah, blah. So I had already started the interview podcast and we kind of came up with this idea to pitch it for them and <laughs> didn't get shit. Um, hello. Um, yeah, <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah, didn't get any anything from the fund basically. So I kind of was like, all right, screw it. I'm gonna do it myself for free, and I'm gonna just build it like that. So I did started the Instagram page, and yeah, and we kind of turned the podcast from the interviews into like a weekly thing, and and kept some interviews going as well. The part that I don't want to bring down the tone too much <laughs> is that. I want to say like weeks after I started the capsule, I got the, my dad got a diagnosis of cancer and sorry. And we're good. Um, <laughs> yeah, he didn't make it here, um, which has been tough. Fuck. You knew it was going to happen. <laughs> That makes it worse. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I'm super happy that we got here. And this part is going to be hard, so I might need you guys to take over. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been tough. And, you know, like doing stuff like this is hard anyway. Um, and dealing with like people having something to say about something that I'm doing is hard. <laughs> um, even more so when you've got stuff going on. Um, yeah, I really didn't want to bring down the tone, but sorry, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, all that to say, thank you guys for your support and people that have supported at home. And um, yeah, definitely going to like push it and make it bigger and make it better. I've got like big plans that I'm working hard on doing. Um, but yeah, it just means a lot that you guys have like supported up till now. So, thank you. Yeah, man. <laughs> What's she playing? Oh, <laughs> yeah, baby. Jen, do you want to introduce the next thing that we decided to do? 
Well, I think that before we introduce the next thing we decided to do, we should introduce the people who are on the couch. Do it. So who do we have? She comes, so I add it to the tally. <laughs> <laughs> and that is... Genius. Meet Tally. <laughs> tally! Yay, hey, Tally! The Lee. calm. The calm amidst the chaos. The, the yes. calm amidst the... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We, I'm sorry, we don't have a button for you yet because I haven't been around. That's true. It's the first time we pod together, Lee. Oh, true. it is. Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Am I still so, so on my Abe for now? So let's do it. And that's on you, babe. That's usually yeah. Abe's button. But also, I didn't get your WeTransfer. You didn't? No. Oh, so the WeTransfer is my son saying all of our names. Which was going to be super cute, but it didn't. Yeah, he, he was refusing. <laughs> so I had a, like an old file and then I asked him to do it and he just refused and then wanted to play with crayons or whatever. <laughs> Kids yeah. be like that. <laughs> um, and then the star of the show. <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to be you. <laughs> no. Okay. That would have been funny. And now the real star of the show. <laughs> okay. Bye bye, Jenny. <laughs> um, are you, you going to tell people what we yeah. did? So seeing as no. this is a live <laughs> She might be on camera podcast. But she will be the star What's even funnier is that you can't see her on yeah. camera It's <laughs> really hot it's really <laughs> it's By the way guys Can I just say Jenny is I'm a lightweight and I'm on my third look beer at the red, Look at the redness Jenny has had like one glass of rum and ginger beer <laughs> Anyone here that's drunk with Jenny before will know it doesn't take long. Yeah, I've seriously just had one. Okay, no social drinking. Do you want to explain drink. what we're doing? Yes, yes. Can you relax? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so seeing as this is a live podcast and you guys are here and we wanted you to participate. <laughs> this mic stand is really... Uh, what? what? <laughs> is it me? Yeah. Oh. It's a combination of things. So... Um, seeing as this Chaos. is a live podcast and we want you guys involved, there was a, well, there still is a table with post-its on it. And, <laughs> okay, and we gathered um, questions and or comments and or topics from you guys that are on the table. If any of you guys haven't had a chance to leave something and you feel so inclined to do so during the course of this, you can go to the table, write something down and bring it to me. But in the meanwhile, we have paper planes and other post-its. So we're gonna do mostly audience questions and or topics and or comments today. All right, let's go. Woo! This is a live show! Now I've got beer all over me. Oh! <laughs> and my only question is what time is it? It's showtime! Okay. Okay. <laughs> the tone of this podcast is varying wildly. <laughs> all right. It's all right. All right, what have we got? Um, what is one thing you know now that you wish you knew one year ago? Answer individually. Ooh, after you, mate. Oh, gosh. Um, this time last year. Uh, like that the covid thing will be a distant memory i guess oh, it was no. still kind okay. of Not eggy distant. then it, that wasn't but very did you did you ever think it was going to be a long like did you think like you said well we thought it was going to last 3 weeks no, but you're saying you, you, a year ago you would want to know that it's going to be a distant memory but did you not think that i year thought ago? there'd be like remnants like it's almost like it never happened like True. it wouldn't be few... this normal True. Yeah, and it still felt like, especially with travelling, because I like to like wake up on a Monday and then be elsewhere on the Saturday. You're right there, lad. No, right, don't no you're not. Yeah. You look like a bitch, though. Um, but, yeah, I just, I didn't know that it would be a distant memory, and that would have been nice, because I, I did struggle. I didn't like having that um, hanging over me, really. Mm. Who did? Yeah. Sure. No one. <laughs> yeah, true. That's who. Got any? Oh, me, yeah, go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> go on. Hit him with it. Jesus. One you thing. You would have liked to have known Jesus last year. Jesus, yeah. Are, he you, was, reborn, he's all, are you a born again Christian? He's all right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> you doing, Jen? What's she doing? I can't see you guys. <laughs> Honestly, we're hiring. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is the best. One thing. Also, all this mic jostling. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Together. It's a habit. My bad. Um, I don't know. One year ago. Where are we in now? September? Yes. Yeah. September last year. Fuck, that was a horrible time. <laughs> what was happening? Uh, oh, fucking hell. We're just going to lower the tone all the time, innit? I was in... It's I was life, man. Legally, life sometimes. I was legally homeless. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry to meet the I got what? fucking bad. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a sun. fun year, everyone. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. I was in temporary accommodation. It was shit. I was trying to do this whole art thing. Fucking hell. <laughs> so, what do you know now that you yeah. wish you'd known then? That, is it what do you know now? Like for What's sure, I think what I would have liked to have known is that it was definitely going to work out the way it did. Oh, like that, like because it's going really well now. Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. It's going sick. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that, just for sure. Like, just instead of fucking hoping and guessing. Yeah. Made a big difference. Lightweight? Damn. That's what I call Luke, by the way. Oh, yeah, I gained that nickname in Luxembourg, I think. Lightweight Lentis. I earned Turn Up Tally. Um, <laughs> what I would have liked to know a year ago. Uh, fuck. Is it some, what I would like to know a year ago, or is it what I know now that I'd like to know a year ago? That one. What is one thing you know now yeah. that you wish you knew one year ago? I can't get over the colour of your face. <laughs> so red. <laughs> Listen, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> she meant the redness. Yeah, me too. That's what I meant. <laughs> um, it's a race thing. Answer the question. Actually, all right. Um, I, I was trying to think of a better one than this, but just that, like, people would actually get behind the idea of the capsule and that i know that there's a lot of sh a lot of shit that needs working out and there's stuff that people don't agree with or people don't like or that people do like and i don't do enough of or there's all everyone's got a fucking opinion but that people in general would be like cool i think you should change this i think you should do this i think you should blah 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 but it's a good idea keep going like that's the thing that i wish i knew a year ago because i was like I maybe would have uh, dived more headfirst into it because mm. I think a lot, a lot of my ten, what's that word? Tentative, ten tendency, tentative, being tentative, tentative. Oh. tentativity. Oh, tentativeness. I hope so. I hope so. I think it's tentativeness, but tentativeness. Uh, tentativity is Tent lit. <laughs> All right, let's go with tentativity then. <laughs> My tentativity was because I was like, oh, people are going to be like, why the fuck is he doing this? Or why is it, why is this a thing? Or why is he doing it like that? And blah, blah, blah. So yeah, as much as I have got that, I've also got a, a lot of people being like, the idea is solid, just fucking get it together. Um, hello. Is that an it? Is that it an is, but yeah, finish. Go, go, go. Like, I remember this period of the capsule where it was... I think that's where the disclaimer started coming up. Like you <laughs> yeah. added it to the intro just so people were clear. Like, hey, my opinion. <laughs> this is opinions, yeah. And I just, I think I've said it on a capsule amongst a chat before, but I just think it's worth repeating. Like a lot of things that happen creatively are as a result of people wanting things to exist that weren't there for them or things that they think are missing in a scene. So... If, you, if there are people that don't like what Luke's doing and think of a better way, please do the better way. <laughs> like, if there's yeah. things that he's doing that you wish there were more of, do, like, a daily pod then. Like, please, <laughs> there's so much room for more of the stuff. Yeah. But our time is so much better spent adding to our scene and community than, like, wasting time just shitting on someone <laughs> who in the face of, like, really hard... Despite the hard time, even if there wasn't any shit stuff that happened in his, in the last year for him, like, this is not easy stuff. And he's so... Like, he cares about it so much. Our little pod squad WhatsApp group, it's a little, been a little quiet recently, but, Which like, I'm not in. <gasps> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't understand why I'm furious. Your, your promotion right. period is almost up. It's right. been quiet. Yeah. Nothing has been said since you joined. That's true. That is, that true. is really true. Yeah. Good. Since um, you started doing the pod, everything's been changed. In, for the best way possible. Thanks, Yeah, Jeff. that's what I meant. Strong. Sorry. He just cares a shit ton. Yeah. And, like, yeah. if you also care a shit ton but don't think he cares enough or isn't doing enough... <laughs> Add your care to the load, guys. <laughs> then, then you <laughs> try to do it. This isn't to you guys in the room. This is to 
the hate orations. I mean, are there people, people that don't like it? People that what the, the, like are there people that shit on you? Are there people that say some shit? Yeah, I mean, it depends because it's we like, won and you didn't say anything. It's like I am one person. Yeah, and I, mean, I didn't see it? all the battles. I know you won now. I'll add it. Yeah, I mean, chill. <laughs> It depends because it's like everyone's always going to have something to say, and I and I do accept. I I think I should be criticised, and if I'm going to put myself in a position where people, where I'm going to say I'm going to speak for fucking all of us, even if it's on a small part of the scene, everybody has a right to say their opinion on what I'm doing because I'm representing them in a way. It's kind of like a democracy yep. type shit, but. Yeah, there are people that have kind of come at me in a not so positive way, which, yeah, I mean, some of them have had, they've been right, mm. and they've just said it in a shitty way, but when I take my fucking being pissed off about it out of this, and I try and analyse what they've said, I'm like, ah, yeah, they've got a fucking point. And then other people are, like you said, just like, you didn't, like, they're, just to <laughs> illustrate to people at home, this is one situation, and this is the type of thing that has happened quite a few times. Oh. Bearing in mind my dad's like diagnosis and stuff, there was one time where I spend the evening with him catching up and spending time and everything. And because I didn't post a win within a few hours of it, I got a message being like, oh, you don't care about this section of the scene, blah, 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 blah. And Sorry. I was like, I haven't been on my phone for like three hours. I didn't say why, but this is the type of thing that people would like. Fuck and then I kind of have to suck it up and be like, all right, like, and I don't want to be like, oh, but this is why. And I, you know what I mean? Is that type yeah, yeah, of shit yeah. where people are like, oh, they, they, more than, they're not shitting on me or hating on me or anything. I don't like that type of thing. But they're just, they see a narrative that maybe isn't there. Like, oh, because we're not from London, you didn't post it in a time. Or because we're not hip hop dancers, you didn't post it in time. You know what I mean? It's like that type of. Yeah. So I guess the positive side of that, right? Which I think is like, I never use this. I'm going to say it for the first time. Give you some flowers. Oh yeah. Woo. Trying out new we'll things. We'll see. Right? Is that you've created something that I, I, I can assume we can all agree that there wasn't anything like this before you made it for the battle scene. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Nothing. Cool. What is that supposed to be? It's sizzle. Sizzle sounds. Ah, sizzle. I thought it was no. rain. It does sound like rain. Yeah. 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 Oh no, it's a good one though. What Sizzling. Else what else you got in the pack? I tried to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But like, yeah. So you've created something that. Obviously, we all feel, obviously, we're here. We all feel involved in somewhat, right? And you're providing this space where people can be propped up. So I think the, the silver lining to that, although they did it in a really shit way, is that you've got something that they want to be a part of. Mm. That the thing that you do that promotes us to us and now to the outside world, which is the important bit about this, is working. Way to put a positive spin on my very Sir. negative mm. point, Lee. Go, oh. Lee! Go, Lee! But yeah, thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, Strong. We... I'll answer the question too, because I'm part of it. Oh yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think one thing that I didn't know a year ago that I know now is that you don't need to have it all figured out to start. Yeah, ma'am. So in I think bars. if you have an idea, it's good to just start and to see what happens and a lot of questions and answer themselves as you go. But I think there's feedback. There's feedback. There is feedback. You're doing great. I don't know how to do it. Don't worry. I'm Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's been my biggest lesson this yeah. year, that um, you just need to have a few answers to start, and then things figure themselves out as you go along. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Agreed. So starting is the best way to answer all your questions. Truth. What else we got? Next yeah. question. Oh, what has been your most favorite? Can you say that? Most favorite or favoritist? No. no. Okay. No. What has been your, your most favorite, favorite, favorite podcast to topic? Podcast topic? That's a good one. Oh, favorite podcast topic. Well, we've fucking debated so much about judging. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's been fun. What else? Yeah, that one. I like to. Uh, go on. What's, what are there more of in the world? Doors or. <laughs> <laughs> doors or what? Um, Wind wheels. Like, wheels. 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 Do we have that any answers fun. to that, by the way, from the audience? Doors or wheels? Wheels. What do you Stupid what? question. Justify it. Think about it. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a justification. Mm. <laughs> of course it's fucking wheels. What do you mean? Like, all right, so you got the obvious one, yeah? So everyone's going <laughs> to argue like, oh, yeah, but cars have doors, all right? Or whatever, yeah? All yeah. the normal yeah. shit, What's right? What's the question again? How many? Doors or wheels? Yeah. How many? <laughs> 
right? But think about, think about push chairs and bikes and rollerblades. Trolleys. Yeah, but How many about, fucking trolleys there are in the world? What about every office building that has doors and no wheels? Yeah, you, they've got that shit. Those got, they've got trolleys in there. They've got those big metal crates that they move stuff around that they hide all the biscuits in. I worked in an office for four years. Yeah. Imagine a truck, 18 wheels, two doors. Think about it. It's just you're outnumbered massively. Who invited Wheels. Her? All right. That, that wasn't that actually was, my that favorite. That was a good. So- no, that was that was your mine. favorite. Really? Yeah, just because it the was- amount of dance stuff we tried to cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I do quite enjoy the parts of the pod where it just like veers. True. Off. I well, feel like it goes into so many different directions and tangents that I can't even remember a topic. Oh yeah. By the Truth. way, if anyone here doesn't listen regularly, and you're thinking like, what the hell is this? Like, this is legit what it's like every week. So. Uh. Yeah. So, sometimes more organized yeah so either continue to not listen or or tune in um when he's not tipsy though yeah i'm usually not tipsy the aim podcast i was shout out to aim <laughs> um i think my I, I like the super bowl conversation we had about mm-hmm. oh, yeah. not, not getting paid um and <laughs> we had some good nft conversations yes with old dylan i don't know i feel a favorite podcast topic is hard okay <laughs> no answer. Do you there have was one, one that I, I liked that we actually cut out, me bitching about hip hop. Ah. But I cut that out. Was I there? Did you? Yeah, you oh. started it. Oh. Oh, also the biscuits. Don't oh forget the biscuits. Oh my God, Stefan. Those, um, oh, the McVitie's, yeah. those biscuits. You and Abe, well, it was you and Abe, basically, that were saying to Stefan that they were shit. What? No, oh, it doesn't Next matter. question. Next question. Right. Yeah. How has the past year of being without the bag... <laughs> Definitely Max wrote that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got money. Uh, Fair. Without the bag being there has taught you. So Wait, we'll say that again one more time and read it properly. Um, <laughs> maybe it's the writing that's the problem. <laughs> I'm joking. It's really well written. How has the past year of being without the bag being there taught you? So oh, without doing this without was... money, what have you learned? Mm. Pretty much. Yeah, it's definitely the reading. Um, me personally, it's my second language. I would assume this is towards me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, that's actually not a joke. She learned English at twelve, so it's actually pretty legit that yeah. she speaks English this well. Yeah. Um, basically, what? <laughs> Go on, Jen. If you assumed it was Chinese before that, you're racist. Um, <laughs> it was word. French. Yep. Um, the not having doing this for money. I think it, well, what was it end? Like, what has it taught me? I think it just solidified that I really love doing this mm. and that I can be good at it, I think. I suppose, I'm talking specifically like the podcast. Um, I think, like, I, I mean, it probably doesn't fucking seem like it right now because I've had drinks, but like, I actually like researched like how to interview and like watch people. I've taken courses like a long time ago on like interview technique and, tried to like figure out how to do this and watch so many pods and like tried to figure stuff out. And even with the filming, the audio, I've gone through so many processes of like figuring all this out. And it's like, it's like two days a week just doing this, let alone trying to elevate it is, is extra time. And I think not really getting money for any of it directly, like there's been indirectly things that people have hired me to do. Uh, on that note, cross platform next week, I'll be doing a live porn. So if you'd like to come along, uh, Ivan Blackstock is hosting and I'll be there. Um, but yeah, I think it, having to do it and having to commit to it and saying, I'm going to do a weekly podcast and it's just going to fucking be like that every week. It, it, yeah, it just kind of showed me that I love doing it and that I can do it without the money. I want to make it into a business and, and get paid to do it, which, you know, Big I'd, plants. Yeah, I, I think everyone should kind of do that with their passions. And, you know, if you're happy doing something as a hobby, fine. But if you're not, work towards something. And I think that's what I'm doing and, I, and I'm trying to get there. But I could do this every week. And especially since you guys have come on board, like, I did want to say thank you at the end. But, like, since I've started doing this not by myself and, like, with you guys for the last, like, seven months or something, I've been like, I fucking love doing this. Like, I once everything's set up and all the technical difficulties are out the window and, like, <laughs> I stop stressing. When I sit down and chat, I'm like, oh, I fucking like having just a chat with my friends every week about something that I love and care about. So yeah, it kind of taught me that of like, all right, if everything goes wrong, I probably still do the podcast every week, you know? Mm. Like mm. even I wouldn't I wouldn't give this up even if it was a failing business, you know? Mm. 
Love what you do, That's do lovely. what you love. That is very nice. And okay. I'll vouch for like, sometimes when I'm, if I have a busy week, I'm just like, no, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> but more often than not, like it's been a really nice departure from my routine or the stresses of just like solo freelance boss woman shit to just like leave my house and know that I'm going to, oh yeah, I know you can relate. Um, <laughs> to just go and see my mates and largely listen to stuff that I'm not present for. Like I get to learn so much about the scene from being there every week. Like I'm a member of the community and a proud one, but like I'm not present for the battles and stuff. So like I learn loads, I get to laugh with you guys. I get to like physically show my pride and support by being next to you on the couch. And it is a really cool thing that you deem us like worthy of a spot, even if it is for no fucking money. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Anything? Love you, mate. What have you learned without getting paid, basically? For this. (laughs) Yeah, for this or for anything. I don't know. Or anything else. (laughs) How do you want him to answer? Oh, shit. Whatever you want. Yeah. Go on. So, yeah, well, for this, no, it's kind of similar to Taos. Like, it's just fun, isn't it? And it's like, it's nice chatting with you guys about different topics each week. I learn some stuff again on on Tally's end as well. But I think, like, more than anything, I kind of like just contributing to your thing and just helping it grow. Like, it's like, again, like, because obviously I've departed from the scene in a sense. I found a way to connect with it with through my art. But I'm not involved in the same way I was before. So when I see you doing this and you ask me to come along and I say, okay, cool. Yeah. I'd love to help this. Cause I really see the value of this in the scene. So it's just like, I guess just get to hang out with my mates, chat and yeah. contribute positively. Yeah, and we love cool, having you, mate. Mm. And a, a few people have messaged me to say they're like when you're on. Oh. Mm. Who was it? How sweet. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say who just to drive you mad. Um, and a few people have messaged me to say Abe is too loud. Um, Jen, chaos. <laughs> Who was it? No such thing as too loud. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> that's what she's. Yeah. Um, whoa. 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 <laughs> Inappropriate. Uh, okay. We're I think that there there's a, something to be said as well for for sure. It's nice to get paid always, but I think there's something to be said for building value versus having value from the get go yes. of people seeing an idea and thinking it's worth or not investing it, but building value in something is something that then belongs to you and is you have more ownership on. So I think for anybody who's building a business or an idea or just starting a venture, the idea of building the value that then is going to be what carries you through mm-hmm. is something that's meaningful and it for sure sucks in the first few years when you're like i'm like plugging all this for free but in the long run it pays off Word. i think Woo! she's tipsy but yeah. dropping bars okay yeah. <laughs> next question <laughs> wearing adidas and nike at the same time oh why is it so low why is mine so low and a little bit of hot hot take Okay, let's Can do this again. Mine? I feel like, is mine lower? It's all it's at the top. Am it's, I just tipsy? All right. Because cool. ever since you fixed the feedback thing. Ever since I did your job, yeah, Karen? Wearing Adidas oh. and Nike at the same time. I wrote that. That was me. You wrote that? I did. As a topic. Go on. Is it? Yeah. What's wrong so, with it? So, what's <laughs> right with it? I mean, it's a different time. But I came up at a time sounding every year of my age. With Mukta Mukta and Kenrick Sandy. Who's he that? knew it was coming. Huh? Who's Kenrick? Who's Kenrick? Yeah, Who that? Oh, that Woo! guy. God, that guy. And it, it was a sin. Mm. You would get rinsed two bits if you had an Adidas tracksuit on. Can we do a, and an Nike audience if you, I don't if you, think it's a thing now. If you don't, really don't think it's a problem, put your hand up. Big up. If you do think it's a problem, put your hand up. Boom. Problem strong. Problem strong. It's I feel str- like people that don't think it's a problem won. Problem is strong. Okay. Like, problematic. I wouldn't judge it. Yeah. I just don't do it. it, it and it is specific to Adidas and Nike, to be clear. Everyone's just fighting yeah. each other now. <laughs> Will you put your hand up? I thought uh, I was. I've had mums and very busy people just go like, babe, I ain't got time. I'm just putting on clothes. Yeah, that's fair. 
fine. I think it's only if you, with anything, it's like it's only if you care about. Like cause some people I see and they dress horribly, but I'm like, maybe you don't care about dressing well. Yeah, so no judgment. <laughs> I just don't. Did I say that? No, but, it's just, it. no, no, but some people don't give a shit about, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Some people don't care about music. Like I pride myself in my music taste. And some people just like, oh, I just like a song if it's on. You know what I mean? So yes. if people don't care about how they dress in that sense, like, oh, as long as everything I'm wearing is like ironed and clean, I'm happy. Like, that's, no? Does it's that quite sense? No? interesting. <laughs> Kenrick's got thoughts. Um, it's <laughs> you can like, borrow my mic if you want. Like, I think it's interesting. <laughs> like, I don't consider myself to be like a surface level person, but it's quite interesting how like indoctrinated I've been <laughs> as far as that goes. Like I did it once on my way to uh, teach III and I got in the car and I was pissed. Cause like my trainers were loud and Nike, but I had like on Adidas shit and I was like, oh my God, I'm spending the day, day uh, like barefoot in my socks. And I did like, I, it wasn't a thing Fair. for me. I, it's ridiculous. I'm aware of that, by the way. It is, I mean, fashion is ridiculous to be honest. Yes and no. In general. No? Is it? it? I mean, as a thing, art is ridiculous. What? I mean, everything is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> saying it. Everything is no, ridiculous. No, do you everything say everything is ridiculous? Is ridiculous. Everything. Yeah. Like, your art, like everything, art in general. Yeah, right? but everything art matters and nothing matters. What? Bars. Drink more! And here it is. Say it again. Good. You said everything I matters agree. and nothing matters. That's yeah, true. like we things I mean, have the sense that matters. we... Things have the sense that we give it. So... Jenny Lou. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, but, and she ruined okay. it. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened with my body. <laughs> just okay. Now. But you don't, you I, don't I think care. You care. Me? You don't care. I right. don't know. Okay. I feel like I care about what other people think. And then that's what makes me not do it. Because I have some articles that it's like, that would go so well together. But if I do it, people will look at me funny. So I guess I it depends where you're going because yeah, like, not but, every room you walk into is yeah, going to be yeah, people that I, care. I know it's a but thing. if you walk into a room with this guy, I've got a feeling it might be an issue. Who is it? Oh, Sean. Sean. Mm. <laughs> oh! That's what? Ooh. 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 Exposed. Oh, he said he doesn't do it. <laughs> All right. He did prove you wrong immediately. <laughs> the dirt is coming out. We like it. Keep it coming. Fight. No, go on. Um, all right, we got another one. Oh yes, this it's is fun. A, it's in a bowl. We should do this every week. Huh? Can we do a live pod every week? Okay. I don't. Think um. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh wait, hold on. I'm definitely not getting drunk Me every too. week. How do you, how do you wait? How do you <laughs> how do you, you think dance has impacted your life both positively and negatively? Ooh. Oh shit. Go on, Lee. Positively and negatively. Positively. No, I should do negatively first and then end it positive. You do both, whichever order you feel like. All right. So negatively, I think it enabled me to ignore the kind of the, the adult stuff. So like <laughs> how to manage your finances or how to plan for the future. I got so lost in the idea of traveling and battling and being a part. You didn't have any finances because you're a, do a dancer. Jesus. <laughs> like, I got so lost in it that, and the idea of the culture and being a, a, a great dancer or whatever that I just didn't pay attention to that shit. And I think like it, it took some years to correct for that for sure. <laughs> right. It's, it's okay now. I corrected for it. So right. it almost like halted your steps into adulthood yeah almost. yeah i think so i think it enabled i think or it facilitated that but i think positively and i always say this is that it there's nothing that i've learned in my life that has enabled me to learn more like dancing okay the, what do you mean so uh first just physiologically i understand my body better than well. i ever would have well uh not dancing <laughs> Like anything physical, I feel like I can, I can adapt to quite quickly now because of just, you know, the, the whole practice of learning choreo. Like it's quite a UK thing to go to classes and just learn choreo. And, like, and the idea of it is really weird. Like you go and you learn these really complex combinations of movements for 30 minutes and then you show it off and then you just leave and you never do it again. <laughs> That's so weird when you like, say it like that. <laughs> like it's such a weird thing, but it's so useful in, in developing your ability to pick up information, retain it quickly, perform it perfectly, and then just scrap it or compartmentalize it and keep it away maybe mm -hmm. forever or whatever, and then just transfer some of those skills across the, the board. So I think that, and then just mentally as well, that same practice enables me to 
navigate any kind of situation. So now when there's something I want to learn or pursue more, like art, for example, I have a process of how to learn things. It's really structured. I, I know how to do it and I know how to kind of... <laughs> F1. And I had to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah, That's nice. what I'd say. Um, oh, ne- how has it impacted me negatively and positively? I think, um, I mean, positively, it's kind of easy. Like, there's so many things like, hey, how you've had to learn. I think also, like, the community aspect of dance is, funnily enough, like, something I haven't really leaned into until I was older. I feel like when we were younger, and I know there's some of the young guys that are here, but, like, I don't know if they feel like that now, but when we were younger, I was so into, like, battling that I didn't give a shit about making friends with anyone. I was like, even like people like Sean and Brooke and those guys who like now I love those guys and I'm like super grateful to have friendships with them. But when we first started, I was like, I only ever saw you guys as targets and not in a in a <laughs> bad way, but it was like what I'm aim- like, I'm going to train so that one day I can beat uh, Sean or Brooke or Super Malcolm or Turbo or Kofi. Or, these are like the only interactions I had with them was like, I want to beat them. That's it. I don't care about what they're like as people, <laughs> you know? And I think as I've got older and stopped giving a shit so much and stopped defining myself about with how many battles I've won, I start to get friendships with people like that. And that aspect is something that I'm super grateful that I, even if it was, you know, better late than never, but that I've started to kind of lean into and like make friends with more people in the dance scene because mm. it's just fucking nice to have friends, isn't it? Um, <laughs> And yeah, so I think that's like mainly, yeah, the community side of it is something I'm really grateful for. And I think negatively how it's impacted me is, fuck, I don't know. It's hard to say a negative. Do you have a negative? Yeah, I I thought about just the... (laughs) Straight away. (laughs) Yes, I do. I've I've thought, (laughs) as well as listening, um, just how all-consuming it is when your hobby and passion becomes your job. Mm. And like, it's a thing you run to, but you're also running from when it gets hard. And I've found that at Mm. times really tricky or the lens that I would look through the negative aspects of my dance life would affect the parts of it that I really loved. I I learned to compartmentalize and know where to go for the different parts, but there, there was a couple of years where it got really techy for me mm. and I needed I, I thought I'd have to duck out but I just kind of ducked out of like industry commercial side of it and mm. but you know yeah. what I think also maybe on that note like because I didn't really have the professional dancer thing up until I went freelance so the only time I've really fully like been professional is in the last three years but also I'm professional with filming and stuff like mm. that but I think I think maybe that's, I almost have an opposite answer to you for my negative is then because of, I guess what we were doing with the battles and because the battle scene, even then, which was like 2007, felt like such a thing. I never really tried to become a professional because I was like, yeah, when I win just a boo, everything will be sorted. (laughs) And it's like, even now that's not the case. And it's like, I think I spent like eight to 10 years, like just working normal jobs and side jobs, like Mm -hmm. going to class, going to battles, going to training sessions and working my job that I hated, by the way, I didn't have like a career that I also loved, like art or whatever, but I was just doing that. And then it kind of made me feel like I was progressing because I was like, oh, well, last week I lost to Kemrick. And then this week I almost didn't lose to (laughs) Kemrick. And it's like, oh yeah, I've progressed. Like one judge out of three voted for me. So I'm kind of improving. And it's like, Really, I was just treading water in my mm-hmm. life. I wasn't really getting anywhere, but because the battle scene has such a thing built into it, I felt like I was progressing in my life. And now I realize, okay, I want to progress in the battle scene. I also want to make more money. I also want to have a stable career. So You know what I mean? And I didn't have that professional experience, which I sh- maybe would have made me feel more positive about dance. There's a, it's like probably the one part of what you said that isn't related to the question, but it wouldn't be the capsule if I didn't do that. But there's this uh, thing on YouTube by a lady called Elizabeth Gilbert, which talks about the difference between a hobby, a job, a career and a vocation. Okay. And I think like we have really high expectations of our work because 
for a lot of us, work happens for us in this arena doing the thing that we love mm -hmm. but like you don't have to love your job it just needs to make you money mm. like a job in and of itself is just that thing that you do to make money a career i'd say is you know with the yeah. level of investment but that like i love the skill set that i have learned through being like a freelance and like just the one woman show like producing and all that jazz but also sometimes I'm like it would be so nice to just like clock in <laughs> just yeah. have less responsibility and then just clock out like the distance from it would sometimes be really bloody nice true mm. oh Word. quick question how does she distinguish between job and vocation vocation is a calling and no one can take that from you it's just that thing that you are destined and should do and it doesn't need money mm it's not attached to a career or a living. It's just that thing that you like, it, it's a creative because she's generally talking about a creative life. I think that's where she puts it as opposed to a hobby, it's that thing that you like to do. It might not be that thing that you're here to do in your purpose, mm. but you like it. Whereas vocation is like, no matter what happens with it, you'll be doing it because that's what Podcast you're here for. <laughs> yeah. Jen, before yes. you. Do Before. you want to answer, I mean? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Um, I think for me, it's similar to Luke in a sense that I think the most positive thing that it's brought to my life is a community and just like relationships that and people that I've met through dance across the world. I'm not from this country. Um, so... Like, just kind of c the way that it allows you to connect with people and to form relationship. I don't know if you guys feel that, but as adults, it's hard to make friends <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but I feel like when you have a shared interest or a shared love or passion, it just allows for that to form. And I think that throughout my life, it's been something that has allowed me to connect with people from different cultures, different ages, different like backgrounds, different experiences. and to kind of the relationship then grows beyond what you love, you know, or what you ha what you share. And I think that a lot of these from like my teenage years, I still carry now like people that are like family to me now. Mm -hmm. So that's a positive. The negative is <laughs> like, I think pursuing dance as a career when I came here and I was like, I'm in London and I'm gonna be a dancer, really <laughs> fucked with my head. Um, but I think like looking at other people's success, like kind of made me doubt myself a lot and made me be like, oh, well this person is doing that and they're successful, so maybe I should be doing that. And this person dances like that and they win a lot, so maybe I should dance like that. And if I don't do it and I'm not winning and I'm not booking jobs, then what am I doing this for? And I think then it made me question, like, what am I doing this for? Who am I? And your girl got lost. Um, so, <laughs> what? It's a true story. So um, yeah, so I think that, you know, in terms of, like, um, identity and, like, finding yourself, and like Tally was saying, in terms of finding, like, passion and purpose and identity with a career and a job and paying rent is really, really difficult. So I think that that was something that really affected like how much I enjoyed dancing. Um, Cause it, it kind of took some of that away because I was so focused on, God damn, your rent is expensive, London. <laughs> um, all my foreigners in the house. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's me. I think, are we wrapping at 10? Yeah, I think, I think um, let's leave it there. I think though, can we keep those and answer them on the next pod? Can we keep, I like doing this. This is sick. Yeah. This is fun. Because um, we do this on, on Instagram and we say, send your questions and yeah. we only ever get like one question. Yeah, by the way, guys, please, <laughs> please give us questions. Like send us questions in. It's super fun to answer you guys' questions. Um, so, Let's, let's give it a little rip. So one thing that's really important is that now 
the we were gonna have a little jam inside here and put some music on and be like yeah let's spooky guys but the bar next door is called gym and tonic instead of gin and tonic huh. yeah very clever see what they did there have agreed to like host our little after party thing so we've got like two hours we've got our resident dj lewis who's already set up over there fingers crossed <laughs> um <laughs> haven't checked on him um but yeah guys if you please um oh he's all good yeah let's go lewis um, I know I believed in you. Um, I knew. I if you guys you. would come over and at least have like one drink with us, I'd be super grateful. Don't have to though. Um, but you do have to. Yeah, so that would be great. And that's literally just like the next building over. Um, we're all going to go over there now. Um, massive thank you to all you guys for being here. I super, super appreciate, like I said at the beginning, like everyone's time, like, getting out of your house and coming here. It's like so, like we do everything online now and and the views and the all that shit is something that I do take seriously and I do take into account and it is important to have an online whatever, right? But the fact that you leave your house and spend your money and your time to come down here, like I always say to people that I interview and that sit down with me and I feel the same about you guys, is like spending your time to come and sit down with me is like, the biggest compliment you can give. You can watch my video 10 times, and I appreciate that. Please do. Please do. But <laughs> giving your time to actually come down here, it means like something extra to me because it's like super important, you know? Um, so that's all you guys. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, to you guys, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Jenny's on the buttons. Can I say uh, something before you finally wrap? Yeah, can before I say, say thank you to you guys first? Oh, yes. Well, thank you to you guys. You're welcome. For, for being here. Um, I didn't, I never planned to have co-hosts, really. And in fact, Lee and Abe wanted me to do it, and I said no. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, all right, cool, let's try it. And um, yeah, it's like, I think it it wouldn't be the same thing without you guys. And if you listen to the last episode where I'm by myself, it's definitely not the same thing. Um, and yeah, I just super appreciate you guys like bringing your time and your expertise to this. And also just to spend in, you know, two hours a week with me, um, which I know can't be easy. Um, and even more than that, it can't be easy to spend two hours a week with Abe. So that brings me nicely <laughs> on to, to the next uh, shout out is to Abe, who's not here. He's uh, one of my closest friends, one of our closest friends. And um, he's actually acting in a play at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre called Antigone, mm -hmm. um, along with another dancer called Riley, choreographed by Carrie Ann. Razak, Nadia. Yep, right, yep, those people. I don't know the Carrie first Anne. one. I know Nadia. Um but yeah, so Abe would have been here, but he's killing it on stage right now. So yeah, I just wanted to shout out to all you guys for helping me. And Jen has like put in so much fucking work with me. Like, okay. <laughs> Him as a human. <laughs> yeah, just me as a human. No, honestly, me as a human. Because or any moves that I do and make and any smart things that you've seen me do or start. No, Behind she didn't do them. No, no, man. no. She's not taking credit, but I have a fucking nervous breakdown and I'm like, oh, everyone hates me. I can't do this a lot. And she's the one that picks up the pieces and kicks my ass and tells me, get your shit together and do it. So thank you, Jen. Yeah, go on. Okay, what I want to say, <clears throat> I'd like to say something, careful, um, is happy capsule anniversary. <laughs> but also, I think- <laughs> also. But also, I think, um, you know, testament to what you've been doing with the capsule and generally speaking, hip hop and street dance is a relatively young art form, you know, in the grand scheme of life. Um, and I think in order for us to be successful and to grow, it's good that we create our own ecosystem. And that means that different people have to be doing different things. And so we can feed into each other and create, you know, amplify our own value and develop and create things. And that requires people to take initiative and to, you know, kind of step out of the box, think of different ways of doing things, think of what is needed, what is missing, what is not there, what people don't want to spend the time doing, what people don't want to spend the time figuring out for free, um, just to help uh, develop something and 
and people that they believe in. And um, with that said, it's like, you know, I, I know a lot of people are doing that in different ways, but I think that what we, what you want to do with the capsule has been doing that in such an important way. And it's only the beginning, you know, and I'm super excited to see, Jesus, I'm out of breath because I drank. It's a really bad situation, but, but um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you and I want to say congratulations. And I think that this is such a dope milestone. This is year one of building value. Um, and I think that there's so much more to grow And um, yeah, like we were saying in the beginning, I think we're also encouraging everybody who has ideas and who has um, a vision or something to start, you know, and see how things grow and to support each other. And that's part of the ecosystem that you're creating. And you guys are part of that by being here tonight. Um, and you're part of that by creating what you did. Um, and that's it. Thank you, guys. Yeah! All right. Did you, did you take down the thing? Can, can I play the outro song? No, because it's changed now. Yeah, but one last time. No. All right, guys. We're Do going it, next Jen. door to Jim and Tony. Is Marin or maybe Naja can direct everyone to the way we're going? Let's go get drinks.